Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Ank, and in this video we are going to talk about copy constructors in C++. We're going to want to discuss why we need them, what causes them to be invoked, and how you can write them. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so a copy constructor is a special type of constructor that is used most often to deal with a particular problem. Okay, and so what is the problem that we need a copy constructor for? What we have is a problem with pointers. Right? Everybody's favorite topic, pointers, pointers, pointers. Okay, so here we have a silly little class named Demo that is used to store a integer variable. To be more precise, it is going to keep track of a dynamically allocated integer variable. Notice on line six that I have an integer pointer named PTR. Okay, on line nine, I've got a plain old constructor. And what that constructor does is it dynamically allocates a brand new integer variable, initializing it, with the argument passed to this constructor and then stores the memory address of the dynamically allocated variable in the integer pointer. Okay, we've got ourselves a deconstructor. We don't want any memory leaks. It's going to delete the dynamically allocated memory. We've got a mutator method that is going to be used to uh, store a value inside of the variable whose memory address is inside of pointer ptr and we've got ourselves an accessor method that will be used to retrieve a value from the variable whose memory address is stored in class attribute ptr we're going to instantiate two demo objects and the second one which is going to be named cat is going to be initialized with the contents of the first demo object named dog. So demo dog going to be initialized with eight. That's going to put eight inside the variable whose memory address is inside of PTR. And then we're going to initialize cat with the dog. Okay. So what you'll probably expect here is that both dog and cat are going to contain essentially the same value. So let's go ahead and compile this and run it, but it's not exactly what you expect. Okay, now let's go ahead and change the integer that the dog demo object is keeping track of to 99. Okay, now when I do that, when we display the contents of the dog and the cat objects, you would expect that dog would display um, 99 or that we would be getting 99 out of the dog object and that we would still have 8 inside of our cat object. But as you're going to see here when we compile and run this, that's not what's going to happen. Okay, so take a look at uh, the updated values on the second line there, right? They're both 99. This is the problem that we need to solve with a copy constructor. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening in memory. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what happened. Okay, when our demo program started, we instantiated a brand new demo object, which we call dog. And dog's constructor dynamically allocated a brand new integer variable, initialized it to eight, and then stored its memory address inside of the pointer PTR inside the dog object. Okay. And then the next thing our demo program did was instantiate and initialize a second demo object that we called cat. Okay. And what ended up happening was that instead of cat getting its own integer variable, with its own copy of eight, right? It was initialized it's with its pointer variable having the same memory address 
as the pointer variable inside a dog, right? So what we end up hap have happening is that both objects are pointing to the exact same memory location. Okay, so because of this, when we called dog.get in that first cout statement and cat.get, we saw eight both times, right? Because both objects were accessing the same memory location. Okay, and then when we call dog.set, right, and we passed 99 as an argument, what happened was, is that it changed the memory location that its pointer was pointing at. But that will also change the memory location that the cat object's pointer was pointing at, right? Because both objects are pointing at the same place. So when we call dog.get and cat.get a second time, what did we see? 99 for both objects because both objects are pointing to the same place because both objects pointers contain the same memory address. Okay, and this is because when cat was instantiated and initialized with the dog object, what happened was is that this mechanism known as memberwise assignment happened. Okay. And this is the default behavior. Okay, and what happens is is that the new object doesn't invoke its constructor or anything. All it does is it takes the matching variable from the object it's being initialized with and copies its contents into its own variable. Okay, so that's the problem that we need to solve. And the way we're going to solve that is by using a copy constructor. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix this problem. Okay, to add a copy constructor to your class, uh, you give it the same name as the class, just like any other constructor. And we're going to be initializing the object with another demo object. So it's going to be, uh, the parameter is going to be type demo. Okay, and I'll name it D. I can name it whatever I want. But we're going to need to um, pass it by reference and we're going to need to make it const. Okay, uh, pass by reference. We need to make it pass by reference for reasons I'll explain here in a minute or two. And we're going to make it const so that way we don't inadvertently change our source demo object. Okay, so what do we want our copy constructor to do here? Well, we're going to want to have a separate uh, integer variable. Okay, that is distinct from our source objects integer variable. Okay, and we're going to want um, to put its memory address inside of, we're going to need to um, assign a value, right? Our own copy of that eight in here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, start pointer, we're going to dereference the pointer variable, and we're going to put in the value from um, the source object, okay? And so in order to get a hold of that thing, I will need to access the pointer variable and my source object, okay? Classes are always friends of themselves, so I can directly access the pointer in my source object using the dot operator, not a problem, okay? But let's keep in mind that, you know, that is a pointer, so I have to dereference it to get to the variable whose address is in that pointer, okay? So that right there should be everything that we need, right? So again, what are we doing here? We are going to go ahead and uh, create a brand new integer variable, and then we're going to copy the value in the integer variable whose memory address is in our source object into the integer variable whose memory address is in our brand new object, the object that's being initialized. Okay, so let's go ahead, save that, and now run it and see if everything's fixed. Okay, let's go ahead and compile, not a problem, and look at the output. All right, so there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what happened to memory. 
Just like before, we started off by creating a new demo object that we called dog. And dog had its own pointer variable. And dog's constructor dynamically allocated an integer variable, initialized it to 8, stored its memory address in dog's pointer. Okay, and then the next thing our program did was instantiate and initialize a second demo object. This one we called cat. Okay, cat had its own pointer variable. But at this point, cat, instead of following the default behavior like we saw before, invoked its copy constructor. Okay, and the result of cat's copy constructor was a brand new integer variable, okay, whose memory address was stored in cat's pointer variable, and whose integer variable had a copy of a place inside of it. Okay, so now what we have are two separate objects with two separate pointers pointing to two separate integer memory locator integer variables. Okay, pointing to two separate integer variables. So since that's the case, when we went to change the 8 to 99, okay, what changed was just this variable right here, right? Since cat and dog are now both pointing to separate integers, only the one that dog was pointing at changed. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk to you about is the three situations in which a copy constructor can get invoked. In this sample program right here, all I have is a stripped down class that has a do nothing default constructor and a copy constructor that's going to do nothing more than just announce that it's been invoked. Okay, so three situations that we have to consider. First one you already saw. Okay, so we had um, the dog that was created and then we initialized cat with dog. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile that and see that one more time. Okay, so copy constructor, we can see that it was invoked right here, first time, right? First example. Okay, but here's another example. What if, notice here that this thing's got a parameter, right? So right, I can pass a demo object as an argument to the copy constructor. So let's say that I did something like this, um, spam, and I'll pass cat, okay? So this is our second example of invoking the copy constructor. Okay, so we see copy constructor a couple times. Um, here's another example, one that might surprise you, right? But makes sense when you think about it. So take a look at line 11. I've got just a stupid little do nothing function that accepts a demo object by value, right? So we're, we're passing by value to this function. So what's gonna happen is, is that I'm passing by value, also known as pass by copy. So by doing that, the parameter here, the parameter, the parameter variable is going to be a brand new object, right? Because you're making a copy of whatever it is that you're passing as an argument to a pass by value function. So that applies to objects just like it does any other variable. So if I call this pass by value function and pass as an argument dog, right? then I'm gonna see the copy constructor get invoked, right? This is something that people don't really think about, is that you're passing by value, you're making a copy, you are creating a second uh, object, right? So you can see the third copy constructor call there. Now that's only for pass by value, right? We'll take a look at my pass by reference um, function. Copy constructor, not gonna get invoked, why not? not making a copy of the demo object. So when I pass by reference dog, you're gonna see nothing's gonna change because a new object is not created, okay? 
All right, so those are the three situations that you have to be aware of, right? If you're going to be writing a class that has pointers, right, you have to keep in mind that this kind of a problem crops up. So it's a good idea to include a copy constructor. Um, and here are the three ways that the copy constructor gets invoked, right? So an initialization statement that looks like this. Right? passing a demo object as an argument to the constructor like this, and then passing an object uh, to a function by value. Okay, great. All right, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that this video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. it let's me know that you know the video actually helps somebody out. And, you know, by the same token, if you thought that the video sucked, well, you know, you've got that option for a thumbs down as well. It's there for you. Okay. And if you would be so kind, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you appreciate the content that I'm putting out. And if you are a student of mine, as usual, please feel free to email me if you have any further questions or stop by my office hours. Okay, great. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.